What's up, everybody? This episode, I'll be talking about the NFL Week 10. Yes, Week 10 has already been the books. And then we get the full Major League Baseball Awards. So we'll see. So I'll give you kind of a re- 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 recap what my opinion is. So let's start with the Falcons and the Panthers. The Falcons take another giant dump. While Deontay Foreman just completely grounds and pounds the Falcons. And this is kind of the theme that you're seeing. You're seeing teams are now starting to run the football. And not just straight up running it. Running it like straight up classic like run plays. Like nothing really too complicated. Like 31 carries, 130 yards. Very dependable type of yards and that's really all the Panthers really needed PJ Walker still wishes he's in the CFL but for now he's enjoying the W after being the Falcons 25 to 15 Marcus Mariota is slamming out surprising no one Seahawks and Bucks this game was interesting it is the first game to take place in Germany and apparently the crowd there was very good. They used to they used to had an NFL Europe team like late nineties, early two thousands. So some people out there are passionate about the game of football. So the Bucks ed- just edged out the Seahawks. Brady plays efficient. The Bucks were able to run the ball with Leonard Fournette and Rashad White. I have never heard a guy. I never heard of this guy. Uh, where did he even go to college? I think it says he went to Arizona State. So I've n- no one's heard of this guy named Rashad White. Well, he had, he rushed for over a hundred yards, and because the Bucks finally were, like finally were able to run the ball, they were able to get some receiving going. Chris Godwin's finally stepping up. Mike Evans is still Mike Evans, and Julio Jones caught a touchdown. Geno Smith still played pretty well, but their running their running game with Kenneth Walker was shot down, just shot down. Like Kenneth Walker only, he didn't even have two yards per carry. So the Bucks completely shut that run game down. The Lions and the Bears, this game was the definition of chaos. Justin Fields almost it seemed like he was trying to beat the Lions by himself. The Bears get a good lead. Like into the fourth quarter, and then just Jared Goff comes back. Then Justin Fields throws like pick six. Then he just makes one of these highlight like ridiculous throw like ridiculous throws like runs. So the Bears get on the board, but they missed the extra point. The, the Lions drove down the field and scored. And the Bears tried to come back, but Justin Fields with that. Man, that just not enough weapons. Daryl Mooney and Cole Komet are solid, but that offensive line still isn't good. And Chase Claypool is straight up garbage. We all know this. Speaking of a team that's straight garbage, I'll be the Cleveland Clowns. The Browns just could just they ran into a Dolphins team. The Dolphins just was dominant. Tua is doing what Tua has done all year, but just the weapons of guys like Tyreek, goddamn Jalen Waddle, Mike Kosicki. Hell, even Alec Ingle caught a touchdown pass. And just like even the Dolphins are running the ball pretty well. Jeff Wilson and Raheem Moster get some good carries. Help set up the pass, and the Dolphins are just are just looking dominant right now. Broncos and Titans in an absolute snooze fest. How many players were injured? Titans players, like there were like there were like hold on, there were like four starting defensive players that were hurt. Let's look at this. Christian Fulton, Jeff Simmons, Bud Dupree, Armani Hooker, and uh, Caleb Farm. The Broncos only scored 10 points. 
Nathaniel Hackett just sucks. He just sucks as head coach. He's terrible. Derrick Henry didn't even run the ball that good either. Nick Westbrook was the best Titans receiver today. Yet they still won. You are the, are you that pathetic? My God. The Giants, they move to 7-2. They had a running back that get just load of carries. Saquon got 35 carries. Averaged 1.3 yards per carry for 152 yards. Rushed a touchdown. As the Giants just kind of win these kinds of slog games. The Texans, we all know, is terrible. Even though Damian Pierce has been their best player. The Giants look poised to make the playoffs for the first time since like 20, 2016. And as good as they played, they won't get four. The Chiefs, they just beat the Jags. Just straight up beat them. You have Mahomes doing what he has done. Throwing the balls like the Travis Kelsey, Valdez Scantley, Kadarius Tony, even Jeremy Kidd was making catches. Juju got knocked out of the game. And Trevor Lawrence played solid. It just, they just ran into a Chiefs team. And speaking of teams that are able to run the ball, how about this Isaiah Baseko, of a Shaka? I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but he's been getting some very solid carries for Chiefs. And that's kind of the theme. Teams are putting more. Emphasis on the running game, which the quality of football has just improved like night and day. The Steelers. The Steelers beat the Saints. The Saints offense has done terrible. It's called, you're, you're coached by Dennis Allen. He sucks. Andy Dalton is the Andy Dalton we all know and laugh. Najee Harris ran the ball pretty solid. Even, even, even Kenny Pickett got some good runs. And just a couple methodical plays. Just the Steelers passing game just doesn't exist. We all know this. They're lucky they faced the Saints team. That's pretty terrible. The Vikings and the Bills did easily the game of the year. It was a shootout. The Bills would strike, then the Vikings would respond. Josh Allen was playing well. Devin Singletary rushed for two touchdowns, even though I'll talk about the Bills' problems. Then the Vikings would get this ridiculous run by Dalvin Cook. And then Justin Jefferson makes the catch of the year. Just straight up ridiculous. Like one hand over over the corner who looked to have full grip of the ball. Jefferson easily played the bat. He's easily top three receiver after that performance. And and the Bills' defense, they, they are missing some secondary players, guys like Micah Hyde. He won't return. Tredavious White should return very soon, maybe next week. The Vikings' quarterback sneaked on fourth and goal. That was stuck. And this is where the Bills, not having a power back, really comes to haunt them on this last So 2021. You know what the Bills could really use right now? Najee Harris. Najee Harris, you could have really used Najee Harris, but the Steelers took him over. Uh, Trey Summers on a power back, 2021 NFL draft. No one knows who Michael Carter is. Ramajay Stevenson, yeah, he's solid. Who else? Who else he could have got? Everybody. Khalil Herber, he's with the Bears. Oh, my. Sarah Hannah Power back. I don't know. Those seasons drive. Let's see who you guys could have got. Uh, let's see. He took James Cook. Was Kenneth Walker? Who was Kenneth Walker drafted? Um, you could have drafted Brian Robinson. Brian Robinson, you could have definitely used. Um, I'm trying to find where in the hell. I'm trying to figure out where in the hell is Kenneth Walker drafted. Probably early second round. 
You, you, you drafted James Cook instead of Brian Robinson. On that situation at the one-yard line, you, you could have definitely used Brian Robinson or some kind of a fullback. Instead, you 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 were kind of forced to do the like a a quarterback sneak that is kind of risky in that situation because now you got everybody condensed to one area. They couldn't even get the snap, fumbled. Eric Kendricks recovered. Vikings take the lead, but the Bills were able to kick a, a game time field goal. Vikings get get a field goal of their own in the first their first possession all the time. And then Josh Allen decides to make m- m- more strange decisions and throws a red zone interception, interception to Patrick Peterson, his second of the game. And the erratic decision, Josh Allen is great, but man, his decision making sometimes just make just questions you. Just why, why is he making that decision? For what purpose? And there's the Bills dropped their second straight game. A team that was seen to be outright Super Bowl contenders. Now you're wondering what the hell is going on. The Colts, they actually won good and looked good doing it. When was the first time we've done that? Matt Ryan, throwing some dots, the offensive line. Holy shit. They actually blocked good today. As a result, Jonathan Taylor was able to do the Jonathan Taylor sweepstakes. Congratulations, Colts! Yay! You also you also did play the Josh McDaniels led Raiders. The pretty shit. Yes, Devontae Adams is great. Josh Jacobs is pretty solid of a running back. But the Raiders, you can't accomplish anything with with the snake as head coach. Sorry. Colt McCoy versus John Wolford. McCoy was able to do solid, while Wolford could do nothing. And as a result, the Cardinals would win 27-17. to The Rams have fall off mightily. My God. The Cowboys can't stop choking. The Packers. Speaking of teams running the ball, the Packers are running the ball. Yeah, you're actually utilizing your strengths. You're actually using Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. Wow. Way to go. Way to go, Packers. You actually, you're actually utilizing your team's strengths. Christian Watson has a breakout game. Oh, the final of all that, the Pack, the Cowboys would screw it up. Dak Prescott threw some questionable picks. Yes, CeeDee Lamb was great. Yes, Tony Pollard was great. You definitely could have used Tony Pollard on that on those third and fourth, third down, like in four and overtime. Nope. Incomplete pass. You decide to go for it on fourth down. Questionable decision. You don't even get it. So the Packers were kind of set up on a short field and they kicked the field goal. Cowboys, Mike McCarthy, what are you doing? You're not supposed to be helping the Packers win anymore. Man, that was, man. Jerry Jones needs to sell the team, man. We all talk about Dan. I talk about Dan Snyder and Jim Mercer need to sell the team. Jerry Jones needs to sell the team. Torgers, your head coach is Brendan Saley. He's terrible. He's over his head. He needs to be fired right now. This team has way too much talent to go 5 and 4. Yes, you have a lot of injury problems, but damn. Damn. The 49ers just looked the overpowering team. They just simply methodically beat you. So, congratulations. The 49ers, they look to they look to take over the wild card spot. So, uh, congratulations, starters. Fire them. Fire, why not? And here's another chaotic game. The Eagles and the Commies. Yeah, the Washington Soviet Commies. The Eagles lost like two or three fumbles. This was a weird game. Because Jalen Hurts only threw one pick, but that was because someone just ripped the ball out of A.J. Brown when he was trying to catch it. And A.J. Brown did not have a good day. My God, he just didn't know. It was not his day. It was just, just wasn't. wasn't the, 
the the commies, the commanders just straight up ran the ball to the like they were playing keep away. They dominated like this like seventy percent of time possession went to Washington. Both Brian Robinson and Antonio Gibson just forty four yards every single play. Terry McLaurin did make some great catches to help out Taylor Haneke. But man, it's Washington just straight up grounded and pounded the Eagles. The Eagles had chances to win. Like it was 26 to 21. Jalen Hurts throws an absolute dot to Quez Watkins. Quez Watkins goes down. He's trying to get up. He's, he's trying to get extra yards. Probably wasn't the best idea. That ball punched loose. And Washington gets possession. And then Taylor Heineke just he straight up he just straight up playing like got you boy. Got you little bitch. And Taylor Heineke goes down. He knows that Brennan Graham just really cannot stop himself. So Taylor Heineke, he knew what exactly what he was. He was trying to draw a flag. And it worked. It worked. Brennan Graham just couldn't stop himself. That he gets called for roughing the for like I think it was like unnecessary like roughing the passer or some kind of oh. The game was so chaotic. I don't know exactly what penalty was called, but 15 yard tail hunting silver is game over. Filling did hit the ball, but it was like 10 seconds. Nothing could be done. It's the hook and ladder. Washington scores because of it. So they won 32-21. Eagles' first loss. Just too many like simple mistakes for the Eagles. Too many fumbles. Just and Washington just played their game plan perfectly. They knew they had to ground and pound to win. They knew that. They knew they had to ground and pound. Don't give Jalen Hurts many possessions. Limit the amount of possessions and win the game from there. They did that. So as a result, Washington's back to 500. Eagles dropped their first game. Don't worry, the Eagles are still a great team. Any given Sunday, that's what it's called. Now I'm going to talk about the MLB awards. Let's start with the manager of the year. Terry Francona will win, wins it from Cleveland. Brennan Hyde from the Orioles. He he was runner-up. Scott Cervantes, he was third. Not I can't really complain. Buck Showalter wins it from the NL. I think that was a good one. Dave Roberts should not be anywhere I consider a manager of the year. He put. The Dodgers probably win in spite of him, not because of him. Brian. For a sneaker, uh, he he finished third. The rookie of the years, they were pretty obvious. The AL was obviously going to go to Julio Rodriguez. He batted 284. He just looked strong. He looked very good in his first season. Mariners definitely have a future with that guy. Jeremy Pena. He had a solve. He had a okay regular season. He really went off in the playoffs. That George Kirby was good. Bobby Witt Jr. from the Royals. He was okay. Stephen Kwan. Very nice, very nice contact hitter for the Guardians. The NL Rookie of the Year. You could have gone either Spencer Strider or Michael Harris. The winner went to Michael Harris. He fat in almost 300. 19 home runs, 64 RBIs, 20 stolen bases. Good season. Spencer Strider, he went 11 5 as a starter with a 2.67 ERA. And that was kind of, it really, that was kind of it. I mean, the only one that's really relevant to talk about, O'Neill Cruz has potential, just not a consistent enough hitter. And the only other one that needs to be any mentioning is Brendan Donovan. Now let's talk about the MVPs. They got it right this time. Aaron Judge, I would be, I would have been so pissed if Judge, you, know, you don't just hit 62 home runs, batting like 310, and not win the MVP. Just no way. Batted 311, 
62 home runs, 100, 131 RBIs, 133 runs scored. He also led in total bases, on base percentage, and slugging percentage. Like, that was, there was no question he was the MVP. The, the National League, a little bit close. Goldschmidt looked like he was going to win it outright, but he kind of struggled late in the season, but he, he still did enough to win the MVP. He batted 317, 35 homers, 115 RBIs, 41 doubles. He led the National League in slugging percentage. Very consistent the entire year. Cardinals fans definitely wished he would have he would have done better in the playoffs because he just he was awful in the playoffs this season. But he still takes the hardware. He still gets the MVP as well as he should be. He was the most consistent National League hitter of the season. The Cy Young Awards. They they got it right this one as well. Yes, Julio Urias was very good. He won the National League ERA title, but Sandy Alcantara was very, very he was ridiculous this season. Fourteen and nine. That's kind of irrelevant because he's pitching for the Marlins. Two point two eight ERA. Two hundred seven strikeouts. He tossed six complete games. That's that's kind of a rarity, like right now. Like you just don't see pitchers throwing complete games as much as you've seen in the past. Like even ten years ago, pitchers were throwing more complete games ten years ago than now. Now you're blessed to throw one complete game. Sandy tossed two, not not two of them, six of them. He did toss two in twenty nineteen, that is. Yeah. But Sandy Alcatara, six complete games. That's that's ridiculous, like, what you see now. You just don't see that as much. You just don't see that as much anymore. You just, you really just don't. Justin Verlander easily won the sire for the American League. He went 18-4 as a starter. He led the American League in wins. 1.75 ERA, best of his career, best in the major leagues. Justin Verlander with a strong comeback season after missing almost two full years with that injury, with that arm injury. And he came back pitching like it was 2011. He just was absolutely dominant. He won his second World Series. Just an absolute phenomenal of the year. What are the awards that deserve to be mentioned? Let's go gold gloves. Why not? I don't, I don't really freak out about this. Shane Bieber, Jose Trevino, Kyle Tucker, Miles Straw, Stephen Kwan, Jeremy Pena, Mon Urias. Andreas Gimenez, Vladdy Jr., and DJ LeMahieu are the AL school dwellers in the NL. Christian Walker, Brennan Rogers, Nolan Arenado, Danzy Swanson, Ian Happ, Trent Grisham, Mookie Betts, JT Riamuto, Max Fried, and Brennan Donovan were the gold gloves for the National League. Did they announce, did they announce the Silver Sluggers? Yes, they did. They announced the Silver Sluggers. The Silver Sluggers for the American League, Nathaniel Lowe, Jose Altuve, Jose Ramirez, Xander Bogarts, Aaron Judge, Julio Rodriguez, Mike Trout, Alejandro Kirk, Jordan Alvarez, and Luis Arias. Or Arias. Yeah, some of these names are not always easy to pronounce, but there are their 2022 Silver Sluggers in the American League, the National League, Paul Goldschmidt, Jeff, Jeff McNeil, Nolan Arenado, Trey Turner, Kyle Schwarber, Mookie Betts, Juan Soto. He should not be winning any awards this season. I'm sorry, but he was awful this season. JT Realmuto. Uh, who else? Josh Bell and Brennan Drury. Those were those are your 
Silver Sluggers of the season for the National League. Uh, don't, don't think that. The executive of the year award is Chris Antonetti from the Guardians. The Guardians had a very nice season. Roberto Clemente Award went to Justin Turner. Comeback player of the year. Did they announce this? Did they announce it yet? Uh, no. If they, haven't, if they haven't announced it, I'm not going to mention it. I don't think that's the Hank Aaron Award. And, and they went to the MVPs. Aaron Judge and Paul Goldschmidt. So that'll be it for this episode of NFL's Week 10 and the MLB Awards. So I hope you enjoy watching. Thanks for watching.